Welcome back, beautiful people. You're listening to a moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York. I'm your host, Zen Sams. Now, today we are chatting about how billionaires train to be space tourists with our very own astronaut himself, Per Wimmer, that's going to be joining the conversation. Now, we all know that space tourism is tapping into a growing trend among the global super rich. It's a desire for experiences and authenticity, so to speak, like climbing Everest, taking you to absolute limits of human exploration and endurance. It's not just a marker of financial resource or a luxury lifestyle. It shows one's physical stamina and courage. About 600 people, including celebrities like Katy Perry, Brad Pitt, Tom Hanks, and Leonardo DiCaprio, have already reserved a seat on one of Virgin Galactic's first flights. Once the flights are operational, customers will receive three days of training to prepare with even special champagne designed to allow wealthy tourists traveling into space to drink fizz in zero gravity. Virgin Galactic is not the only organization that wants to meet the demand. Jeff Bezos' Blue Origins company, followed by Elon Musk's SpaceX, has also announced plans to send passengers around the moon in 2023. Now, this race between companies planning to send tourists into orbit is definitely heating up. Virgin Galactic has built up what it calls a community of future astronauts, over the last few years. And one of those astronauts is Per Wimmer. He is a founding astronaut with Sir Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic since 2005. And he's going to be on one of the first commercial rocket flights to space. He is a Harvard grad who owns and runs Wimmer Family Office in London, as well as his own investment bank. He's traveled to more than 85 countries, dove with sharks in Fiji, and set a world record by executing the world's first tandem skydive above Mount Everest. He claims, and I quote, I want to write the manual rather than follow it. And that's why I want to be the first European tourist in space. Clearly, his story is about pushing the boundaries and making dreams a reality. Now, going into space is not just like taking a high-speed jet across the world. Per has successfully completed his space training, including weightless zero-G training, flying Russian MIG-25 and L-39 fighter jets. Oh, my God. Gosh, welcome to the show, Superstar. I can't believe I have you on. Thank you very much for those kind words. It's humbling, but fun. And that's what life is about. You are, I'm speechless. Like that list of accomplishments uh, is making me feel uh, like I need to go back out there and relive all over again. So congrats on your life and all your success. I have to ask, are you married or single? Uh, I'm not married, but I do have a girlfriend. Um, so, so that's my, my uh, status. Uh, my hat off to this fine young woman who is by your side. Uh, I mean, you find the time to manage it all, plus have a beauty on your arms. That's epic. Now, when are you going into space and can I come? Of course you can come. It's, uh, it's, it's an experience that I want to share with as many people and in space enthusiasts as possible. And, and most importantly, actually, as many kids as possible, because uh, my mission to space within Weimar Space uh, is basically twofold. It's put me into space and hopefully safely down again. But it's also, and equally importantly, to share the dream of space, to show how amazing, great, fun, cool space is, and, and in that process also hopefully instill a bit of interest into space science and math and engineering for, for young kids around the world. So we want to use the, this as a vehicle to send a message across the globe to uh, school kids and, uh, and, and, and join, join the quest, and if they can and if they want, and including yourself, come and join the, the, the space launch when we take off. When are you taking off? So we haven't set the date yet, but it looks like it'll be uh, hopefully within the next um, 14 to 18 months from here. So uh, it's it's looking pretty good. So I'm, I'm hopeful there will be uh, sometime during uh, 2023. 20, uh, 
That is pretty amazing to think about how far we have come uh, and, and especially to, to really talk about, you know, wh where COVID has taken us as a society. But then on the flip side, when you hear about such incredible advancements, even on the private side in where we now have the ability to go into outer space, it's just it gives me chills. So this this. Um, this entire trip, so to speak, from beginning to end, how long does it take and how much does is like the average, you know, trip cost? Uh, so the duration of, of the trip is is actually done uh, within a day. Uh, once we go, we, it works like this. You, you uh, have a mothership where you travel up to about 16 kilometers of altitude. That mothership flies a normal um, a jet fuel. At that point, it releases the rocket ship, mothership goes away, and you ignite and, and, and off you go into space. But once you do that, uh, it will be at, an, at a speed and an acceleration um, of about three to five times the speed of sound. So it does go pretty quickly. And space starts um, somewhere between 80 to 100 kilometers up uh, in the atmosphere. So you do get there pretty quickly. Uh, actually, um, uh, traveling at those and those speeds and with that that acceleration. So, so getting up there, um, it will all be done. We take off in the morning, preferably early in the morning because of the weather, and uh, go up to space, cruise around, hang there, uh, float around in zero gravity or weightlessness, uh, just like you see in on, on, on movies or space programs. And then once we're done there, we turn around and then head right back into Earth and enter into the Earth's atmosphere, where there'll be about 3000 degrees centigrade outside the cabin at that point. So it's going to go quite hot. Um, but uh, fortunately, the spaceship is uh, built and approved for, for that. And then we'll land just like you see the uh, space shuttle uh, landing uh, three legs down and then a, a very, very long runway. <laughs> like you've taken my breath away because for for me to even envision this is just it's I'm so excited that we've come you know this far as a society but now I have another question how do you go by you know buying a ticket like do you have to purchase tickets in advance is there a wait list um yes uh, is the answer to that um I actually bought my first ticket to space in 2000 so 21 years ago it's quite a long time um, so I, I think I was the very first private European to sign up for private space uh, back back then, and I was even on the launch on the launch pad in Baikonur, Kazakhstan, one year later when the very first private citizen ever went into space, uh, the American Dennis Tito. I was literally on the launch pad um, in Baikonur when he took off on his Soyuz. Uh, 10, 15 minutes before his launch, which was fantastic and, and a real true breakthrough. Uh, since then, I've been doing my training, um, flying uh, MiG fighter jets, as you highlighted, uh, doing centrifuge training like you see in Moonraker, quite uh, quite um, topical, I guess, with, with the new James Bond movie coming up here uh, shortly. The premiere in London is actually today. Um, and then uh, also been doing uh, weightlessness uh, training where you fly up in a cargo plane if it's in Russia, an Illusion 76, uh, or if it's in America, it's a Boeing 727. And then you nose dive down for 30, 40 seconds at a time and you accelerate with G, the equivalent of the, of, of the gravity, of the Earth's gravity, uh, down towards Earth for these 30, 40 seconds at a time, and therefore creating weightlessness where you're effectively floating around completely as if you are in space, and, and therefore it's fantastic space training. So those have been some of the training elements, and, and each one of them has actually been frightfully exciting and, and, and great in its own right, to be honest. That is phenomenal. So I have a couple of questions because I want to move on to something else in terms of, um, you know, you're, 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 you moonlight as an astronaut, but you're, you also have Wimmer Financial, which is a big portion of your, of your day to day, so to speak. But what, okay, so how, what's the, tr what's the waiting list right now to get onto one of these um, ships to go to space? Sure. Uh, specifically on uh, Virgin Galactic, uh, there is about uh, 600 uh, future astronauts signed up and, and ready to go. Uh, so it's obviously a long pipeline. So if you were to sign up tomorrow, uh, you would have to wait um, a, a few years to, to sort of be ready to, uh, to go until that pipeline gets cleared out. Got it. As a founding, 
as a founding astronaut, a founding astronaut, I'll be I'll be one of the first to go once we get the uh, uh, once we get the final green light. We do have commercial uh, uh, license now to operate, so that is uh, box ticked. There's a few more test trials uh, on on the space flight left, um, and once those are done, we get to fly. Pretty incredible stuff. Pretty incredible stuff. What essentials do you take into space? Is is that like you, you have a have a backpack or it's like what, what does one bring to space? Well, hopefully as little as possible, to be honest, because weight really matters. Um, because uh, you want to have as little weight on board as possible, because uh, there's a, a weight of the fuel to weight of the spaceship and passengers ratio that you got to comply with. So as little as possible is is the thing. But in my pocket, uh, I'll certainly have some memorable uh, photographs of family, um, maybe some small uh, things that are meaningful in in my life. And then hopefully also some um, uh, maybe some drawings or something that school kids have created about their dream and their vision for space. Uh, we'd we'll love to do a little competition and, and oh, take some I of that up. I love it. I love it. I love this this philanthropic side of you. So okay, real quick because we have about three minutes left in the segment. Um, this is like yes or no questions. It's just I want to pick your brain. Do you believe in extraterrestrial activity? Um, Possibly, possibly. Uh, there's too many. Uh, there's too okay. many uh, planets out there. So okay. yes, possibly. Oh, I'm glad it wasn't definitely a no. So because I, I always kind of love to explore that aspect of things. Now I want to move into something that kind of ties in Wimmer Financial, um, which is quite interesting because Wimmer Financial was founded on the 50th anniversary of Sputnik Day, October 4, 2007. You heard me on this day in 1957, the Soviet Union inaugurated the space age with its launch of Sputnik, the world's first artificial satellite. So there you go, have, drawing it all back together, coming full circle. Tell me really quickly about Wimmer Financial and the types of things that you're doing on the finance side. Yeah, so within Wimmer Financial, we do mainly large scale real estate uh, investments and, and development finance um, in the Western world. Uh, we also do natural resources, mining, oil and gas, green energy, as well as industrial. So basically large scale project financing, but with a heavy, heavy emphasis at the moment on real estate. Within Wimmer Family Office, we run uh, diversified investment strategies, fund allocations to external funds, etc. And then I also have a quant hedge fund called Wimmer Horizon CTA, where we do systematic trading, manage futures and that sort of thing. So, so lots of fun and, 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 and exciting things. And then obviously Wimmer Space, where, where I do my motivational speaking. Um, I'm an author as well. I, I'm currently working my fourth book. Um, uh, so I, I do sit down and write from time to time. Uh, we also do a lot of philanthropic efforts. Uh, charities team up with with a number of charities, support them financially and in other ways uh, through inspiring not at least kids to do well and to live out their dreams as I'm living out my dream. And then also do other adventures um, uh, from yeah the, the the world's first tandem skydive about Mount Everest to traveling thick and thin throughout the the globe, um, etc. So I, I I love to have fun and and uh, and enjoy and live out my my adventures as well. Well, then you did your outro for me. I was going to say all that, but you took it all away from me. And of course, you delivered it better than I could have ever. But I was just going to end it with wimmerspace.com because that's quite impressive, especially for all the kids out there that want to be inspired to grow up and become an astronaut. We have living proof, ladies and gentlemen, that Per Wimmer is an astronaut. He is going into space and he is essentially self-made. You guys are listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, The Voice of New York. Pert, thank you so much for coming by. It was an absolute pleasure speaking to you. See you in space at Astra. <laughs> Please tune back in. We'll be right back after this on A Moment of Zen on 710 WOR, The Voice of New York.